Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'll be showing you guys my attempt at market timing. So I'll try and find cases of extreme fear and extreme greed by using the VIX and the Qs. I will go ahead and subset cases where the VIX is over 30 and the percentage to the 200 SMA on the Qs is less than 10%. And I'll go ahead and use these cases for buying opportunities. On the flip side, if the VIX is less than 15 and the percentage to the 200 SMA is greater than 10%, I'm going to consider those good selling opportunities and I'm going to create a fictitious portfolio made up of these three stocks equally weighted. So if you want to test your own portfolio, you would have to insert your tickers here and what the script will return are all the buying points meeting this first criteria, all the good selling points based off the second criteria. And it will also return two tables. One is called all long which will backtest your portfolio by buying when there's extreme fear and selling at the next available point of extreme greed. And alternatively, we do a backtest for your portfolio called all short, which will return cases where we, instead of buying when there's extreme fear, we short sell when there's extreme greed and buy back when there's extreme fear. So I ran this backtest from 2005 and for the all buys, we have a couple of instances where it met our criteria of the VIX being high and the percentage to the SMA being less than negative 10%. So for the back test, all of these dates would have been good buying opportunities. And for the all sells, all of these data points would be considered great selling opportunities. For the all long book, we would buy when there's extreme fear and sell when there's extreme greed based off of our criteria. Within each row, you will get a start and end date, where the VIX started, where the VIX ended. Same thing for the Qs, the ETF performance, and also our portfolio return. And the last column just returns the holding period in years. Now, if you notice, there's a couple of instances where it bought in 2008 and 2009. So it will scan for the next available period to sell. That's why we see a redundancy in the end date. Now for the most recent case, we had a couple of great buying opportunities in 2022 and one instance in 2020. Now we haven't had a period based on our criteria to sell. It will go ahead and return the most recent data for the VIX end, the Q's end, the Q's return, and also our portfolio return. Now for short selling, we flipped the start and end dates and the table would be interpreted the same way. Let's go ahead and take a look at our script to view all the code. All right, so we start off by requiring some packages. Here's where you will assign your portfolio. As I mentioned previously, we're gonna use the VIX and the Qs for benchmarks. We're gonna combine all the tickers and get data from Yahoo Finance. I'm gonna then merge all the adjusted closes together, format the column names, calculate daily returns. I will create an equal weight portfolio for my three tickers by using row means. And then I use charts performance summary from performance analytics to plot my portfolio against the Qs. So if we take a look at that plot, you see that my portfolio is not that exciting compared to the Qs. Having an approximate 100% return since 2005 versus a 200% return for the Qs, but we'll see how that compares by using market timing. So back in our code, I'm gonna separate the benchmark and the VIX into this variable called BM. And then I built a function that will separate and extract all of our returns called timing market. So here's where we calculate the 250 SMA for the Qs. I'm gonna add the percentage to the SMA as a column, merge that XTS object with my portfolio. I'm gonna use NA omit to get rid of any NAs. We then subset by our criteria and separate into two variables called buy and sell. Now up to this point, we will usually see groups of buy points and sell points within a given month, but I just wanna extract the first occurrence. So from line 47 to 57, we're just going to extract the first occurrence of our buy signal or sell signal. We're going to assign those variables into our global environment using lines 59 and 60. Now we need to back test using our portfolio. So in line 64, we're going to pass in our buy signals and find the next available sell signal. And then we're just going to extract the values for the Qs, the VIX, and our portfolio. If we're not able to locate a sell signal, then we're just going to return the most recent data. And this will run for every row in our buys table. And after it calculates for all the rows, we're just going to assign that into our global environment. The next block will do the same, but for the short side. So for all of the rows and sell, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to extract each row of sell, locate the next buying opportunity where we buy back our shares. We're going to extract the values. And if there's no buy point available, we're just going to return the most recent data. And after it extracts all the returns for our sales, we're going to assign it into our global environment. 
So you will run this function and then pass in these variables to get these four tables. So let's go ahead and minimize this function. And if we sum our returns for the queues and for our portfolio using market timing, we will see that for the queues, we get an 8.8x return. And for our portfolio, we get a 3.3x return, which beat the cases that I showed you in the chart. So for the queues, just buying and holding since 2005 would have generated a 2x return and a 1x return for our portfolio. Well, guys, this concludes the video. I'll leave a link down in the description area to my Patreon where you can find the script. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.